What's going on, fellas? I haven't posted a video in forever. I've just been way too busy. Thought I'd go ahead and uh, do something tonight. What we're looking at here is a uh, 10,000 watt oxy hydrogen torch. You can see here the electrolyzer for this bad boy is massive. This is uh, quite the machine here. And I'm gonna be using this to uh, melt some metals tonight. I'm doing a little experiment to see if I can make a, like a, a forge-free heated crucible. I'm gonna try and hang this oxy hydrogen torch on a stand and just have it aimed down into a crucible, kind of like a crucible preheater. Uh, I might add some propane to it and all that stuff. and. Uh, I'm also just kind of checking out this camera tonight. I've never used my GoPro on 4K before. So I'm gonna fire this electrolyzer up and uh, let you guys see this thing running. And then I'll light the torch and we'll take a look at the flame. I'm only gonna be running it at around 7.5 kilowatts. That's about 33 amps because I only have a 20 amp wall outlet. So we're really pushing the limits of what I can run in my shop here with this thing. Quick little walk around here is our massive diode. It's got a nice little heat sink and a cooling fan. And um, this here's our main reservoir that's connected to two flow pumps. And those flow pumps mitigate something called polarization, wherein bubbles accumulate on the plate so badly that it diminishes the active surface area available for the electrolysis process. And these pumps cause a high enough flow through the cell that those bubbles are knocked away immediately. And um, you can even see the increase in amperage on the amp meter. But uh, that's what that little thing right there is, just a little amp meter. It's a shunt type. This just runs all that stuff. And we have an air compressor as well that I often hook up to the bubbler because sometimes um, adding air to the uh, HHO is a little bit better than just straight oxy hydrogen gas. But uh, yeah, let's fire this thing up and take a look at it in 4K and uh, see what we got going on here. Okay, here's our meter. Now this right here is for the fan. It has a uh, fan speed controller. And we have the uh, power controller for the booster pumps. I'm gonna turn that on. And you can see this allows us to adjust the uh, flow rate because uh, not all flow rates are a good setting. You wanna have that control to be able to adjust this. If you get it flowing too high, Sometimes they'll start drawing too much amperage and or it can cause other issues when it starts to foam up really bad. So this rotometer is inaccurate. So don't beat me up in the comments. I know we just want to look at something moving. Um, I was supposed to shut up and fire this thing up. So here we go. I'm just going to turn it on high. There's no sense in jacking around. Turn the key on topping out at about 35 amps there when it first starts but polarization takes over and uh you start getting bubbles on the plates and that reduces the surface area now i'm going to turn the booster pump up so you guys can get a visual of what those have to offer okay that's with the pumps on full blast and you can see it cranks up the amperage substantially we're up to 34 amps there. I'm gonna turn those off for now though, because uh, we're running pretty cold. I just wanna see how this thing runs. We're at 27 Celsius. This is at 6.05 kilowatts. So I'm kind of afraid to light the torch at this setting. Oh yeah, you guys wanna see this. This is in 4K. I've never used this camera for this before. Now the fluid that you see being pumped right now is being pumped by bubbles alone. 
You can see the discharge of both sides of my electrolyzer. Both of these legs feed into an area there and they are both ejecting fluid. Let's get a look at the amount of bubbles we're producing here. Okay, the rotometer's right at about 20 liters per minute. But we know that's wrong. It's a fairly furious amount of gas. Not joking around. Make sure I turn on the cooling pump. Okay, the cooling pump is on. Now these other canisters you see here are for when we're really cranking some amperage, what'll happen is foam will build up so bad that it'll start entering the gas discharge line. So it will fall down in here and it has time to settle in this tank. And if I were to run it up into the 50 amp area, that foam would even carry over to this next catch. And you can see we have a third one as well. I've got a flashback arrestor with stainless steel wool just kind of sitting here. Um, we're cranking out quite a bit of gas. I think it's probably okay to go ahead and fire it up. We're at 30 amps, 7.1 kilowatts. Let's check this torch out. We're gonna separate the men from the boys here. This is the scary part of doing this stuff. Lighting these torches is absolutely terrifying. Nobody died, so we're halfway there. Very scary to light an oxyhydrogen torch of this much power. It's kind of hard getting out of bed in the morning with the brass kahunas you need to do it. So there it is. Very ferocious flame. Let's uh, find a target. It's just vitrifying it almost instantly. It's glass now. I'm not looking at this through the glasses. I have the camera in the way. And it's still blinding. Go. Scary. This is scary shutting it off. Nice little explosion there. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna try to do is set something up that just kind of sits there aimed at the bowl so I can just walk away as it just sits there and does its job. So that's what I'm testing tonight. Let's see what happens. I haven't um, used this thing forever. That's why we're seeing a little bit of rust in there. She's just been kind of sitting sitting idle other than that everything's working great no major foam up issues you can run this thing all day that's a little warm no leaks happy about that um these copper bus bar strips are working out fantastic Typically on a cell this size, if you would just have a terminal hooked up like this, you would get some tremendous localized heating. There was a very even heat distribution all down the sides of these tabs. I've done that to both of these. That's what that jumper wire is all about. We don't want to rely on this stainless steel to carry electricity into the center of itself. So we have this jumper wire going from copper conductor over to this copper conductor. Ooh, that baby's got a little heat. Because even in this small distance right here, um, the resistance is quite high at high currents. So we're gonna be seeing a lot of this thing here coming up. I just wanna do a test with this 4K camera for the most part. And I wanna post a video with it to see if we hate the fisheye effect. Like, I don't know how well you guys can see this electrolyzer or not, but man, is it cool. It's 
so right on thanks a million Muhammad this thing is a beast all right so this is just a little check this is not the GoPro so anyway I'm also going to be building a burner today out of this uh, recrystallized silicon carbide nozzle this is one step above the regular silicon carbide nozzles and I have a crucible and a foundry we're gonna be filling that crucible up with this material here this is some partially melted e-waste a lot of uh, different types of metals in this for sure and this is the foundry we're going to use actually one of my fellow commenters uh, pointed out a little error in my nomenclature this actually is not a foundry um, a foundry is actually a building that contains furnaces that melt metal so to call this a foundry I use that term to differentiate from a forge because a forge typically is not used to melt metal it's just to get it hot and beat the heck out of it with a sledgehammer so this is uh, the unit we're going to be firing up and we're going to melt down these two canisters of that material I've got uh, probably don't even want to touch those things with my bare hands we're going to be melting down all of that stuff and turning it into a material like this right here man that is so heavy and cool this is 70 percent copper you can see the difference in color there actually that's not a very good representation it's changing color on us you're killing me dude you're killing me so there's that we're gonna be making a bunch of this I'm, but uh, I want to turn it into shot material no bigger than this stuff here because and that's because we're gonna be putting it inside of this bad boy right here I'm just about to throw this thing together here I've got all the parts now the cyclone finally showed up which by the way looked a lot smaller in the picture this is an electrolysis cell with a anode basket that is going to be filled up with metal through this port right here and it will be digested and plated out onto this plate into pure copper this is the beginning of an electro winding cell and a electro refining cell it's going to be doing both just getting everything set up 